beware, you're in for a scare. Hello my darklings, Pushing Up Roses here, and welcome to yet another Goosebumps thing. The first episode I covered did so well that I felt inspired to give it another go, and who doesn't love some classic children's horror? Much like how I chose an episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark to cover, I turned to Twitter for a late night poll because I've clearly lost control of my life and cannot make my own decisions. I asked my followers what they thought the scariest Goosebumps episodes were, and even though I had a couple in mind, I was curious if their choices matched mine. There were many suggestions for the Haunted Mask, which I do agree with and also think it's one of the best, but ultimately I decided to go with Stay Out of the Basement because Plant Dad! Oh, hello. I'm R.L. Stein. I write the Goosebumps books. You know, I rather like R.L. Stein. He churns out books every 30 seconds, but some of them are memorable, and I think he's good at making stories just scary enough for young adults. He also knows exactly how to work with things like body horror, so that it's clearly scary, even gross, but not so much that you end up with traumatized kids. Trust me, I saw the 1986 version of The Fly, and that kind of body horror is fucked up. There's nothing more disturbing to me than peeling off your own fingernails. Blech. The moderate amount of body horror in Stay Out of the Basement is definitely one of the reasons since I consider it one of the scariest, on top of being a two-parter, which allows for more suspense, character development, and plant interactions. Typical runtime is about 22 minutes, and sometimes it's tough to cram an entire story in that span, so I always liked it when Goosebumps had two-parters. It also usually meant better quality and special effects. As we begin our story, we see a girl and her mom outside. The mom appears to be going out of state to visit a sick relative, and her daughter, Margaret, laments this because she does not want to be left alone with dad. See, he's been acting kind of Weird, spending extended amounts of time in the basement. He's even stopped calling me princess. Well, boo-hoo, does he also not change your diapers anymore? We cut to some... Science. And Margaret asks her younger brother Casey what their dad does, to which he responds... He's a botanist. He studies plants. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's code for he's building a weed empire. The mom, Mrs. Brewer, doesn't seem to be terribly concerned about her husband's growing detachment and gets the hell out of there. I don't think she's coming back. The kids go into the basement to tell Mr. Brewer that it's time to take their mom to the airport. Everything is green, because plants. Dad? The Philip Hughes aren't working again. They get a couple steps down before Dad comes bumbling in. Hey, I forgot, what's the name of this episode again? Stay out of the basement! Oh! Dad chastises the kids for going down there. I just don't want you down in the basement. I have super ghouls and ghosts paws down there and I don't want to lose my progress. While dad is away driving mom to the airport, the kids hear some weird shit coming from somewhere in the house. Maybe it's the wind. That's not the wind. I farted. They head downstairs and there are fucking plants everywhere. Margaret comes across one that appears to be breathing. I'm getting some heavy Nancy Drew adventure game vibes. If you've played that game, do you remember this plant? It's scary. Oh, it's living! Who's a good boy? Apparently not this plant because it ends up pricking her finger. As dad pulls up to the driveway, the kids scramble back upstairs, but Casey needs to go back down to get his sweater. He manages to grab it, but dad is suspicious. Did you go into the basement? We were scared, the noises were were strange and... Did you go into the basement? Did you go into the basement? We were scared. The noises were, were strange and... The basement. Ba ba basement. Basement. Ba ba basement. After a few minutes, he comes around and he's like, nah, it's okay, let's have a chat. He says he's working on something unusual, but he can't explain it right then. Margaret knows something is wrong, so she tries to cheer up her dad by making him breakfast. He passes on some eggs and bacon for some plant food. Now at this point, I would probably be calling poison control, but Margaret instead calls her mom. She tells him he was eating some kind of plant food and her mom is like, oh pshaw, it's probably just a work thing. She is checked out. Eavesdropping dad snags the phone when he hears the conversation. I've just got this really bad feeling about Dad. Hi, honey. I'm gonna need you to pick up more plant food on the way home. Later that night, Margaret hears some weird heavy breathing, and I'm not gonna lie, my first thought was, is he jerking it to some plants? I mean, listen to this. <laughs> Uh, 
It's either that or this is the weirdest ASMR session. Turns out, no, he is a plant. So this is where the body horror comes in and it's pretty effective for the targeted age demographic. I would find this terrifying as a kid. The ooze, the weird leaf hair. Yeah, this would gross out poor little baby roses. When I was young, maybe about five or six, my mom took me to a store and all of the Halloween decorations were up. And I remember this one advertisement with crystal clarity showing some dude's head growing out of some weeds like a cat. Cabbage. Totally traumatized, could not eat spinach for years. The next day, Dad decides to play it cool, make breakfast, and tell the kids what he's working on. An experiment which involves taking animal DNA and putting it into plants, which is impossible, by the way, as they have fundamentally different cells, but I do like the idea of it. Feed me, trouble, and feed me now! Anyway, breakfast. <laughs> this oatmeal's gone bad. It was mush. Luckily, before the kids can eat Dad's plant food surprise, the doorbell rings. He's visited by another scientist and they both adjourn to the basement. The kids snoop around outside and hear them fighting about something, but then BAM! Plant attack! Leave me alone! <laughs> <sighs> they manage to fight off the plant right before their dad finds them, scolding them for being by the window. Visibly angry, dad sends the kids to their room. As they hurry back to the house, dad gives the plant a couple high fives. <laughs> Dr. Merrick, the other scientist, now seems to be missing, leading one to believe that he's combining human DNA with the plants. Meanwhile, Dad's behavior just gets more aggressive. He even puts locks on the basement door before running off yet again. Desperate, the kids try to find the number to the hospital room that their mom left them, but it's missing. They decide to look for it in their parents' room. While they're looking, the phone rings. It's Dr. Merrick's wife, saying that her husband never made it home. I think that's another scary concept for a kid, the idea that someone died or went missing. You don't necessarily see see it happen, but the idea is there, and that's a good way of making it scary for adolescents. The atmosphere is also really tense, with the storm raging outside and the dark blue lighting. Dad comes back early because he allegedly forgot something, and Margaret ends up hiding under his bed. As Dad is fussing around, he sits on the bed, and worms start falling out from somewhere, presumably his body. He also drops Dr. Merrick's ID, and I thought, holy shit! Did he kill that guy? Again, that's a genuinely scary idea. We also get a little gross out moment when Margaret pulls back the sheets of her parents' bed to reveal a swarm of worms. Hmm, anyone else got a taste for spaghetti? Armed with weed killer and a crowbar, the kids decide to break into the basement. Wow, that is the wrong way to use a crowbar. The plants have basically taken over now and some of them are, uh, handsy. Another impressive visual is this face buried within the plant. I love it. The kids hear a muffled voice behind a locked door in the corner and they think they found Dr. Merrick, but instead they find… their dad? He explains that he is in fact the real dad and the other dad is a plant copy of himself, but then plant dad arrives and no one knows what the hell to do. He also makes a plea that he is the real father and the other guy is the plant. Will the real Slim CD please stand up? He's lying. He's a copy. He's a plant. Copy. We got you. I don't know, I kind of like the idea of just keeping them both. It's prime sitcom fodder. Shrubs, coming to Netflix. After a lot of confusing finger pointing, the previously locked up dad calls Margaret Princess, which causes her to spray down leaf hair dad. Princess? They find Dr. Merrick in a different closet and he's totally fine, and dad starts sporting a new shiny hairdo. Margaret is still confused as to how this all even happened, and to be frank, so am I. He says that he cut his finger on a slide and got some of the blood into a plant cell, which somehow made a half-plant, half-human copy. That's a rather weak explanation, even Dr. Merrick over here isn't buying it, but sure, whatever. Evil humanoid plants, stranger things have happened, I suppose. And it's a happy ending! Just kidding! Apparently there were more dad copies hiding among the flowers, so as it is common with Goosebumps, this one has a more ambiguous ending. Please help me. I'm your father. I'm your real father. Real father. Oh, I'm your father. No, I'm your father. I'm kind of leaning towards the idea that this is their real dad, but they may have to deal with a ton of human copies. I was thinking that perhaps the twist would reveal a copy of Margaret since she pricked her finger on a plant earlier on, similar to how her dad cut his finger. I personally thought that would have been a way better ending, but overall this is a great two-parter from the Goosebumps show. It has some suspense, gross-out moments, body horror, 
whatever this thing is, I can see why people suggested it. It's also pretty accurate to the book with a couple minor character changes, a longer buildup, and a slightly different ending. In the book, Dr. Brewer burns all of the murderous plants in his own backyard and promises never to do experiments again. As both kids are walking towards the house, a single plant beckons them for help, claiming he is their real father. I know I referenced the 1986 version of The Fly earlier, but this whole story reminds me of the original Fly with Vincent Price, especially with the whole premise of gene splicing. I'm thinking R.L. Stein may have taken some influence from that. This was only book number two in the Goosebumps series, but it's still a memorable one because Stein really nailed a sci-fi plot and toned it down enough for it to appeal to kids, perhaps even opening them up to the sci-fi and horror genres. If there is an episode of Goosebumps you are dying to see me cover, please let me know. I am open to suggestions. Until then, stay spooky. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching my review of Stay Out of the Basement. If you are interested in more Goosebumps related content, I will link it at the end of this video. But first, have you heard about Patreon? Yes, Patreon, where you, the patron, can support me directly by pledging small amounts of money so that I can keep this channel going and buy my parrot luxury sunflower seeds. Don't you feel better knowing you've made this dumb bird happy? If you're interested in more television content, I have linked a couple on the screen, and if you'd like to discuss your favorite Goosebumps episodes, be sure to leave a comment. I am always looking for more to discuss on this channel. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next one.